Coming up on today's episode, mental health includes our emotional, psychological and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, act and it also determines how we respond to stress while we investigate how it influences our weight loss efforts. And leading nutritional expert Patrick Holford shares his thoughts on optimum nutrition for the mind. Feeling better. Da, 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 da. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of Real Health. I'm Stacey Holland and it's fantastic to have you with us again. I've mentioned it on the show before that some practitioners believe that without mental health, it becomes difficult to achieve physical health. And while it's tough to cover the plethora of conditions that fall under the umbrella of mental health, we're going to try and provide you with as much practice practical information as possible. So to help us begin unpacking this complex topic, we have in studio with us Patrick Holford, a leading spokesman on nutrition specializing in the field of mental health. We also have psychotherapist specializing in trauma therapy, Louisa Niehaus, and later on our resident uh, nutritional therapist, Nikki Robertson, will also join us in studio. Patrick, you've made it your life's work to educate people on the fact that they can achieve optimum nutrition for mental health. What does mental health mean to you? Uh, well, it means feeling happy, um, having a clear mind, a sharp mind, uh, being able to sleep, not being anxious, not being stressed. Yeah. So, you know, being in a very positive mental and emotional attitude to life, embracing life, enjoying it, rather than feeling like, oh my God. Louisa, there's a difference, though, between mental health and mental illness. And often I see these terms used interchangeably. Is that incorrect? Mental health is, as Patrick correctly said, being in a positive state of being. So being able to have resilience to deal with traumatic events that happen in your life. Whereas mental illness would be an illness which has a biological or psychosocial basis to it. Okay. So is it possible then for someone who's suffering from a mental illness to still be diagnosed with a generally good state of mental health? Well, I think if you break it down, we've actually done a survey on 100,000 people, including quite a few here in, in, uh, in South Africa. Yeah. And both between our survey and other surveys, one in four people uh, in their life will be diagnosed with a mental illness, whether mm. it be depression or anxiety, insomnia, or something more serious like bipolar, schizophrenia. So it's very, very common. Uh, one in 40, if asked today, uh, will say they suffer from low mood. Yeah. So when you hear about major depression and minor depression, yeah. these are actually just degrees of yeses on a questionnaire. Mm. So it's very important to understand this. And the same thing is also true. In our survey, we asked people if they frequently felt anxious or stressed, and 83% of people said yes. So, you know, a, an extreme version of that would have you, you know, seeing a psychotherapist yeah. or a yeah. psychiatrist. And even if you take something like schizophrenia, which affects one in a hundred and is very, very stigmatized, uh, in truth, the, the sort of symptoms that a person might experience are sometimes hearing things or seeing things. Now, if you ask the general public, have you ever heard something yeah. or seen something? Yeah. About one in three will say yes, right? Sometimes your mind going blank. Again, has your mind ever gone blank? Yeah. Um, you know, feeling very anxious or stressed, unable to cope, yeah, you know, yeah. feeling depressed. So what happens in schizophrenia, it's the same symptoms that we may have all experienced at some time mm. more extremely. Yeah. So it's kind of, a, you know, it, it's the a degree it's in the scale of the continuum. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think what really happens is when someone hits that point where they can't cope anymore, yeah. uh, you know, then they are given a label. And it's terrible, you know, I mean, yeah. especially with kids, it's ADHD labels. Yes, yeah. I mean, the truth is life is so fast now, you know, the games and phones and all the rest of it, you know, and yeah. you have all this going on and then you expect a kid to sit still for an hour at True. school. I mean, it's really boring. True. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Patrick mentioned a very important word, stigma. And, and is that the reason why people aren't getting help nowadays? Is there's a sense of shame that I'm actually struggling with something? There's a huge stigma, Stacey, to mental health disorders and mental health illnesses. What happens inevitably is people tend to isolate themselves mm. because the more stigmatized they feel by society, by friends, family, co workers, etc., they become isolated. And it actually worsens the condition. Yeah. And I think we're also inundated with so much media about having to live a perfect life. Yeah. 
yes. look perfect, be perfect, act perfect, that you feel somewhat undermined when you're not feeling in such a positive state of mind. True. What, what is the normal you know, mental state of mind? Well, funny enough, what happens now in the Facebook world um, is that we present a false self. Exactly. You know, we show lovely pictures. Yes. We always say the right stuff. And people technically have more friends, but actually have less real friends, mm. less face-to-face -face time. So there isn't the chance to express your vulnerability and say, mm. actually, I feel awful today. You know, that really cut me up and so on. And that's terribly important. I mean, there was a survey last year in America, university students, one in five admitted to having checked their smartphones during sex. Wow. <laughs> you know? so what? We're like, you know, we're like wired, you know, yeah. All, yeah. all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. We, we see people, we have a, a clinic in London as part of our charity, and we see people with, with mental illness from you know, schizophrenia to depression and so on. And one of the things, you know, nobody with schizophrenia will ever say, I have schizophrenia, it's got such a bad name. Mm. But we run tests and we, and we show them, it's actually, your, you know, your, your brain isn't working quite right because of this and this, and as a consequence, you know, do you feel this, yes, this, yes, this, yes. And he said, it's not you, mm. uh, you know, it's actually your brain. And, and mental illness, if you call it that, is no difference to diabetes. You know, mm. In diabetes, your blood sugar isn't working. In heart disease, your blood pressure isn't working. And in depression, your mind, body, brain yeah, isn't, isn't working. working. It's not, you know, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you as such. It's just things aren't working, needs to be sorted out. So, you know, if my, if my plumbing isn't working, I call a plumber, right? Yeah. If I'm stuck uh, in solving problems, I want to go and see a psychotherapist. I think we need to demystify well, mental can, illness. Yeah, I was going to say, we also rank um, disease and conditions. So, for example, diabetes won't be as bad as schizophrenia. Yeah. And mm. because of that, that's why people don't want to say, well, hey, hang on, you know, I'm struggling a little bit. It may not be at the end of that mm. continuum or that spectrum. I had a patient who said, when I was in hospital with a broken leg, people brought me gifts. But when I went through depression, everyone avoided me. Yeah. Yes. There so. is a shocking statistic, uh, which is now in the world every year, globally, there are more deaths from suicide than there are from violent deaths in all warfare and murders. Mm. I mean, we are not happy. No. And one of the problems is that, you know, when you do, for example, feel depressed or anxious, you, you lose your perspective. Yeah. So mm. the idea that it could have anything to do with what you eat uh, you know, it doesn't cross a lot of people's minds. Yeah. I mean, years ago, one of our very first studies is we took kids uh, in a school and we gave half of the kids in the school a multivitamin and mineral and the other half a placebo. Mm. And there was a seven point increase in the IQ. And that was the first study in the world in the early 80s that made people realize that what you eat has an effect on your mind. Mm. But we have people who are deficient in vitamin D and become depressed or omega-3 from fish oil mm. or become depressed or are eating a food. I mean, it's very common celiacs, which is a serious wheat allergy, affects yes. one in a hundred people. It affects one in 40 with depression, mm. right? So one in 40 people with depression are actually an undiagnosed celiacs. Yeah. And for those people, if you take away the wheat, Suddenly All of a depressed. sudden. In fact, mm. that was my yeah. experience. And when Nikki joins us, we're going to touch on um, nutrition for better mental health mm. and also the gut-brain axis. And also when we come back, Louisa, I want to pick your brain on the effect of the modern lifestyle on our mental health. Because I know that you take people away and you have these fantastic retreats. And what are the trends that you're starting to see? So you've got to stay with us. Good mental health isn't about feeling happy all the time, as Patrick mentioned, and just ignoring challenges. It's about coping and even thriving despite those problems. Stay tuned, because when we really so we discuss those coping strategies. I'm feeling better. The unbelievable Specsavers winter promotion is now on. For a limited time only, get a free frame up to the value of 1,500 Rand. That's right, a free frame at Specsavers. Or choose to pay for your frame and get up to 1,500 Rand off your lens enhancements. You get to choose. This is just another reason we are South Africa's most popular optometrists. Visit specsavers.co.za for more information. Specsavers, for affordable eye care and a whole lot more.
If there's one thing we cannot deny in our homes, it's color. This week, Karen Richards of K Interiors will be helping us explore the use of color, whether it be a splash or a spread. Our design makers this week are the Design Team South Africa as we visit their factory and explore the imagination behind their printed textiles. We also feature Alicia Annandale who adds splashes of color into homes and Donald Lumalo tickles us pink with an all pink inspired space at this year's Design Joburg. Get inspired always right here on Design For You only on the Home Channel.